They say only the most merciful person can forgive when he's able to revenge. Maybe that's the right way. Not my way. If you love movies, you love the idea of Expendables, and that is what if you took all of the greatest movie stars, action movie stars, thriller movie stars, and you put them together in one movie? And you can plug into part three quite easily. You don't have to see any of the previous ones. It's not like you wouldn't understand the kind of characters that we're trying to play. Each individual movie just keeps raising the stakes, and it's its own entity. I mean, Expendables 3, it feels like a brand new start. We want to make a bigger movie, more interesting, more action, and bigger star. Add on the prestigious actors, like in the case of Expendables 3, Mel Gibson and Harrison Ford, Wesley Snipes, Antonio Banderas. There's a lot of humor, a lot of energy, a lot of action, but it's well phrased and controlled. It's good filmmaking, I think. The most important thing for me Beside the story is the action. This movie will be built with bigger action than the first two. Is it gonna be bigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I predict. Writing the script went up to about 145 pages. A lot of people that don't realize most expendable scripts are 90 pages. And you have the, some of the greatest movie stars of all time in one movie, and it's not a fantasy, it's reality. Good men, you got killed because you couldn't stay out of my business. I would go. I would. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna buy a ticket. Three, two, one, go! The exciting thing also about Expendables 3 is discovering Patrick Hughes as a director. It's always exciting when you get a chance to see a director like Patrick get an opportunity like Expendables and then make the most of it. Patrick went into this film with the objective of making this a film a standalone and that's what i think is making it so refreshing sylvester stallone who created our franchise with avi learner they were both quick to see that this young man had something that wasn't just talent because you can have talent and then you're faced with these 17 movie stars and seven franchises and you can freeze uh, what do you think of the we'll, we'll outside oh he's a hack i mean all he does is call action and cut and that's it that's all he does you know he, he takes control and he and he speaks to stallone in that way too sometimes you know which i think is good because if it's your baby and you're producing and you got all this other stuff to think about it's important to have a director that you trust he's young but he's also tremendously focused very aware he sees detail and he sees opportunity I enjoyed working with them enormously. You know, half the time my trouble is to try and make them all stop talking so he can shut up and shoot. I like his enthusiasm. He's like a big kid. You know, he knows what he's doing. He knows his way around the set, a camera. He's very confident. He seems to be a real good shooter, too. So the trick is, you don't call cut, you keep the camera rolling. Then he would run back to his monitor and then he would call action and then he would then run back in again and give you some more directions and then run back again. And so you see this enthusiasm and this passion. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no respect, it, it, bro. It sends, it sends out a little message to the other crew that are around. I mean, he's been here in Bulgaria prepping for a long time. He takes it incredibly serious. He, he's mapped out every single fight sequence. He's got these like models built where he's like, you know, flying planes around and, and showing everybody. So he's got the whole map for the movie in his head. Uh, just, just going through my contract. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you got all these people, millions and millions of dollars worth of uh, big stars, all sort of running around, and he's totally at ease. He's as happy as a pig in shite. I really do, guys. There's a lot of people here on set with a lot more experience than me, and I'm enjoying every part of this journey, and I'm learning from every single one of you, and I really love the vibe that we have on set. Everyone's having a good time, and we are smashing through it, so thank you very much. And he's got a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. I don't know if it's in a bottle, but you know, it's a lot. <laughs> he's got a lot of it. He can share a little bit, too. 
You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what else he does and maybe even work with him again in the future. Hit, hit. You ever raise your voice to me? You'll be back in Australia, shagging sheep where you belong. You understand that? Well, don't do your job. Sorry, kid. If you have uh, a young director like Patrick, I think it's helpful to, to him to have a very experienced second unit director. A lot of the meat in these movies is shot on second unit, especially the big action sequences. Normally when you shoot a film, you might do, you know, 10 weeks of first unit and a couple of weeks of second unit. But this film, because of its size and because of the actors we have, we had to assemble a full second unit, which is basically like doing two movies at once. Basically, we are running two crews here. There is the first crew and the second unit, and the second unit are doing amazing stuff. Obviously, working with coordination with the director of first unit. We hired Dan Bradley, who is probably the top action second unit director in the business for, for many, many years. And the footage that Dan is getting is unbelievable. I thought on the last film that we had action that we would be hard pressed to even reach that level. And, and I already see that Dan has already gone beyond that. You know, it would be a little lower. Yes, you can. Okay, so even if we get a separate camera. Okay, okay just to show a camera down here so that there is that moment where it's like, it's going right over his head and I see it in the air, exploding right over your head. It's like eight feet above your head. Yeah, because here, we're gonna come up here and say, come home to Papa. Boom. One of the things that audiences expect when they come to an Expendables movie is mind-blowing action and stuff that is really being done that's not just being created just because it's green screen and completely CGI, but movie stars and stuntmen accomplishing amazing things. I think part of the appeal of this franchise is the fact that, you know, there are a bunch of guys here who can actually do some of this stuff. You know, I was a karate champion and Jason was an Olympic athlete. You know, Stallone has done a lot of training. Arnold, of course, Mr. Universe. Terry, football player. We got the MMA champ over there, Randy. And not to speak of the new guys, boxing champion, female MMA champion. And we got a lot of people with real skills. There are certain actors that are big action stars that you don't really buy as badasses. Like, you hang out on this set and you go, Shoot, like all these dudes are not pretending, they're not acting, these guys are genuine badasses. What about one of these guys? These guys are pussies. A lot of times when you're working with actors that can't do their own action, you have to double them. And in doubling them, you compromise your shots, which compromises the integrity of the action in the movie. With all of these guys, because there's so much experience in this movie for action movies, you just put the camera where it goes and let them do their thing. <laughs> It was all under control. Yeah, that's what it looked like. It's really going to show in the film because when you have the actors involved in the action done by an action director like Dan Bradley, it's going to look unbelievable because it's the actor's face there, not a stuntman's face. Go! Dollar fine! Full of energy! We are brothers now! Good. Get to the roof. Yes, sir! They really take some hits and falls. They're like athletes in a way. I mean, they're, they're taking part of a lot of the action. It makes me realize how dedicated they are to their profession and to what they're doing. They're like really kicking ass. You look at Rhonda. Rhonda is flying around a dude's head that's twice her size, throwing him down to the ground and delivering a punch. She's not faking, that's the real deal. Because I come from a military background and because I was a fighter for so long, I am a big believer in preparation, execution, and recovery, and preparation being the key part of that. Like, I will schedule them every day. If I feel like they're not hitting it hard enough, I'll try and schedule them on the weekends too. Because how we practice is how we will perform. These kids are really hungry. You know, they really want to do it and they want it to be great. And they know this is a big opportunity for them. Rhonda had a couple of signature throws that we didn't have in there that we added because I saw her do them. I was like, oh, hell yeah, we're doing that for sure. We're going to rip somebody in half with that for sure. But the previous process for me is a flawless process. And this is just the way we do it.
prepare, execute, recover. How we approach, actually, the action heroes was always as a metaphor, as something that is a little bit bigger than life, that is more choreographic than real. I like that kind of duality between comedy and action. I like to make the people know that the real, real violence is something drier than what we are doing here. What we're doing here is it's just big fun. You know, the bad guys are almost unrecognizable. They're not almost human beings. They're people who fall <laughs> in a big choreography. There's something that comes out in, in the kind of the locker talk and, you know, taking the piss out of each other and, and not taking each other too seriously, but then still going out and kicking ass that people like. I love doing action movies and I've learned that what's on paper is a tenth of what you actually get to do. I'm really looking forward to riding the motorcycle and working with the uh, Red Bull Motocross guys. And there's this really cool stunt where I have to take the bike and go up this ramp and throw the bike and drop my grenades and grab onto a pole swing in to save Barney's life. We've hired a bunch of the Red Bull motorcycle team guys to jump the bikes. We reached outside of the box to get the best of the best to make the sequences interesting. There's going to be motorcycle work, huge explosions, fight work, gun work. Everything you can think of is going to be covered in this. We have Ronda Rousey in this movie. We have Randy Couture in this movie. We have Victor Ortiz in this movie. These guys are real world champions. Three. There's only a couple movies that I've worked on that have been anything like this, but they're not quite as big as this. This is outrageously huge. I have seen some of the most incredible stunt helicopter piloting that I've ever seen in my life. We could spend three weeks doing something that's on screen for 30 seconds. But it's shot with a lot of different angles and different takes and it allows the editor to increase the pace of the sequence and make it more exciting for the audience. We've got stunt guys standing on top of a train, moving at full speed, being shot down by machine gun fire. We have a stunt guy who is running full speed, jumping over one car to another, landing and having a fight. And in this film, we're going to have people jumping from a train to a helicopter. We're going to be having stuff happening on the water. It's going to be incredible, and it's going to be the biggest action yet in the experience. You finish here? There are two extremes with Jason Statham's driving skills. I did a picture with Jason where he actually did his own driving stunts. And when I asked the stunt coordinator, how's he doing? They basically said to me, if Jason hadn't chosen to be an actor, he would be a great stunt driver. He was that good. He used to drive a truck and we had a truck following us and um, we basically have to shoot at this, this vehicle and it rolls to a stop and he has to stop the car and, and we pull out our guns. Well, we did a run through and his brakes did not work. And I was just sitting there like, oh my God, I just watched the person die. I didn't know what to do. I'm like waiting for the ambulance, the whole thing. All I knew is that, you know, stay out of the way, don't panic. And then all of a sudden, out of the water, here comes Jason. You know, he was a professional diver. That was his thing, man. <laughs> if it would have been me, uh, I don't know if it would have ended that well. I was getting my hair done. <laughs> I was filming. The real deal, and this is what really makes Jason incredible, is that he went, changed his clothes, Hop right back in the truck. <laughs> we lost a lot of red cameras, digital red, epic cameras.
They've got great professionals. It's easy to work in here, but this is becoming an unbelievable center to make movies. So this place is an old metal factory. 40,000 people used to work here. I think that uh, finding a location like this in America would be virtually impossible. You might find portions of it here and there, but like Bulgaria, it's a, it's a whole different lifestyle and the scale of this and the construction of this, which was during the Cold War era, it just lends itself to a gloomy, foreboding, massive scale that we rarely see in the United States ever. What we found here was a playground for uh, the war that surrounds the block for the final battle sequence. So what we're shooting here is geographical placing. As we have the expendable sweep through here, we set up this area, we see the block in the distance, so then when we come back out here for the tank battles and the motorbike battles and the army battles, the audience is aware of where they are in the scheme of things. So when we cross cut from Jason in the rooftop fighting, back out to here. He talks almost as much as my character. <laughs> <laughs> almost. He's getting there. Okay, recasting Galgo. Bang, 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 bang. Somehow, just me and water always seem to meet up. But the deadliest scene ever was the shower scene in Specialist with Sharon Stone. That's when I came face to face with death. You know, coming back to Bulgaria, it's like I was just here last weekend, and it's been two years since we were here. Definitely like putting on your, your favorite shoes. So what we have here, these are the prop cigars that they're reserved for uh, when you're filming. So they're for the cast members. What I like to do is every morning take one of these. Don't tell Sly. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Get a fresh air. Never hurt anybody. Okay, see ya. Yeah, so what's it like being a top flight drone pilot uh, on one of the biggest movies of the decade? Look, it's just uh, another skill set I have. I don't usually um, often do it on my own films, but in this case, I felt it was just needed because I really wanted to get this shot. Yeah. It's, it's difficult being a drone pilot, but I started last week, and I'm one of the best in the business. All right, landing. It's landed, pan onto it's landed, quick. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's take that mountain. I, I just love that position. I love it when he walks like that. It's so crazy. <laughs> Can I push you guys even further, man? Fine. <laughs> Whatever. This is the third time I've been to Bulgaria. Things are looking up for the country. The people's spirit is the same. It's just as beautiful as it was before. People are terrific here. They're, they're, so, they're so friendly and it's a real charm to come back and, and see the smiling faces and all you know, get to work together again. Everybody, Masichki! They have a great stunt team here, Alpha Stunts Bulgaria. It seems to be very competent crews here. Everybody seems to know what they're doing. It's efficient, it's quick. What's not to like? I'm digging it. See what's going on here? I step away from my chair. One minute and 28 seconds. And all of a sudden, the chair's gone. That's how active my heart. I did, I did an impression of Arnold Schwarzenegger because I do it all the time without even knowing. I go, and Arnold Schwarzenegger like turns around and like looks at me and I'm like, oh shoot, like I, I Arnold just did the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, doing real life in front of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, we're in Rusty's Bar today. Rusty's Bar is kind of our home base for the Expendables. It's set in New Orleans. I very am convinced that I'm in Louisiana right now. Yeah? Well, it doesn't work that way!
What? We've been through the mud. The shit and the blood. And I've saved your ass more times than I can count. These studios are absolutely incredible. The, the amount of production value, the infrastructure, the crews, the resources here create a really, really big budget epic film, which Expendables needs to be. Bulgaria is the place to be. Working with Sylvester Stallone since day one, I am in awe of his instincts. That man has a creative instinct that I still to this day, I think, oh, I've worked him out. I think I know how he's going to approach this. It's not an action beat he hasn't done before. You know, that's one of the joys of working with him. And he's also extremely hilarious. He's one of the funniest men I've ever worked with. I'm threatening to book him on the improv studio in LA because he needs to do it. He needs an open mic and he can just roll. They're in trouble. The Expendables are being made to dance naked. <laughs> Am I allowed to do slime impersonations? <laughs> But I wonder if we can get a donkey on this roof. Uh, yeah. I prefer to go for a sheep. Yeah. You all exchange a look? What are those, the sheep? Was, as we all know, Sly is a legend. He's a great movie maker. You understand he's a writer. He's also a director, a producer. He's a true partner of mine. He inspires not just me, but everyone that's around him. He's a massive creative talent. He's the only actor in the world that's had a number one movie in five separate decades. I don't know anyone else that's had that, so there's a reason for that. Uh, he makes fun of me a lot, though. I don't know if it's making fun of Gunner or Dolph. I haven't figured that out, but... <laughs> we punched each other in the face, what, about 25 years ago? And <laughs> I think you, when you're in the ring with somebody, you, you get to know him pretty well. He's such a badass in all his movies, then he comes to set and he jokes around and he's just one of us. Best time working with him. As everyone knows, he's a highly trained, very talented actor. He long ago uh, won the battle of whether or not he should be taken seriously. You really give this guy a chance to court. It's not my decision. No, never is. It certainly has an intensity that he brings to everything that he does. Trapped in here, like rats in a maze. I've always looked up to him. It was kind of just through his perseverance, through his just grinding it out and like not accepting no for an answer that he got to where he is. And he's arguably the biggest movie star on the planet. He took a chance and I am forever indebted to him. Three, two, one. Would have thought years ago that I would have even met the man, let alone, you know, be rubbing shoulders and sharing scenes with him. It's uh, it's, it's great as a person. He's he's just tremendous. You know, he's a, he's a super smart chap, constantly being educated in his company. So I love him as a director. I love what he does. Enough of that. I'm not going to say any more. They'll think I'm having an affair with him. <laughs> you were stupid enough to get yourself into this mess. We're the only ones crazy enough to get you out of it. Come on! We're late for war! You know, these are characters created by, by Stallone, most of them. And, and, you know, he has this knack for knowing what the average Joe likes. You know, the guy in the street, what do they like to see? They're not superheroes, even though it's a bit of a cartoon, the whole thing. But still, within that concept, the characters are, are sort of human and they have their flaws. Now, they're the old school pals that uh, have this undetachable bond. They just can't work alone. They can't work without each other. And they're all quirky in their own separate way. You look like a proud, demented father. Trench is a guy that has been partners with all the best warriors around, and Sly always needs my help. So I come in and rescue him. And sometimes we partner, sometimes we do separate missions. We have mutual respect for our talents. You an idiot. Thanks for showing up. I guess our favors are done. The team have trouble, so Arnold and I, we try to come back to help them. Pretty good. It's getting a little kinky over here. <laughs> <laughs> He's responsible for supervising the mission and to try and control Barney and his renegade bunch. Also, he's responsible for the intelligence to help find the, the character that Mel Gibson plays. If I were to start thinking of him as a bad guy, I'd, I wouldn't be doing my job properly. 
I mean, it's the first rule of uh, Stanislavski, which is you do not judge your character. Do you think that you can just deliver me like a package? Luna is the only girl expendable. And the, the, the kind of the joke is I wear the least amount of armor. <laughs> and I, and I kind of, I kind of uh, bust the guy's balls a little bit. I'm like, armor's for mistakes. I don't make any. <laughs> I'm an expert at like close combat. I come from a judo and MMA background. So that is what I'm actually an expert at. She actually fits in really, really well with the guys. And they really don't make that much of a fuss about there being a girl there. In fact, it, it kind of helps a little bit, you know, running like recognizances and like, all this sort of stuff. I'm very inconspicuous because I'm a chick. Uh, you know what? Tied up in front of Antonio Banderas, you always feel sexy. <laughs> Even with dirty armpits. She said that? Yes. You said that? It is true. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. I love to rescue her, actually. I would rescue her in my whole life. Yeah, well, he's a very hyper guy. Um, very excited about the idea of being part of the Expendables. Um, he talks a lot. <laughs> I want to be your friend. I don't need a friend. Yes, you do. Everybody does. I, I, I don't have any friend. He talks to a point of... Uh, non-return for everybody who is surrounding him. <laughs> but behind that talking and that kind of hyperactivities uh, that defines and describe him as uh, his personality, there is something hidden. Uh, there is some kind of uh, painful story that he doesn't want to uh, reveal. And it's not until late in the movie that actually Barney, Barney Ross managed to actually open the can and see what is inside that character and then we realize that everything that he's doing during the movie all this kind of compulsive talking is just nothing but a mask in the general concept of the movie i think that he brings a lot of life Soy el no vio de la muerte i am the bridegroom of death the character i play is doc call him the doc, they call him the surgeon. Some of them call him Dr. Death. Basically, he's one of the original uh, Expendables who formed the team, and uh, he ends up going off and doing, doing his own little thing on a little mission, little moonlighting that he takes off and does, and it goes wrong, and unfortunately ends up missing for about eight years, and it takes him a while to find him. When they discover where he is, he's been in rendition somewhere in a, in a, in a terrible prison. He rescues his friend and brings him back to uh, join the team. But the costume was cool. Doc is more of the uh, knife man. He's a little bit more laid back. I guess you could say some of the other members of the Expendables. Plus, he's a jazz guy on the quiet side. When you're sick, you call me. There's a doctor in the house. Give me that morning ride, if you know what I mean. Toll Road is a, a complex and interesting character who, in a lot of ways, is kind of the, the glue that, that holds the team together. He's the first one to jump up and defend somebody who's, who's being ragged on, but then he gets ragged on by all the guys, too, for his ear. And College-educated guy who doesn't have a lot of family, but these are his family for all intents and purposes. These ragtag misfits are, are his people. I think Gunner is just the example of what can happen if you see too much bad shit, you know. He's trying to hold it together, but once in a while he kind of falls apart, and uh, I think it gives for some drama and also a little bit of uh, comedic relief at points. You got that line parking here? Yeah, there's something right here. Every man can see a little bit of himself in each character and whatever demon he has to fight. Um, and I think that it really, it just hits on all cylinders it, on a really kind of psychological level because one thing we all know is that there will never ever be an end to war, to a, a villain, of someone new that you're gonna have to come out that comes out of nowhere and turns your world upside down. Right. Number one movie right, in the guys. world right here. Number one movie in the world, let's go. Boom. Bonaparte is a procurer of uh, mercenary talents. He assembles teams for different contractors to, to do things that other people can't. And uh, he's made quite a bit of money at it. He's very successful at it, and he's a former 
mercenary himself. He just, you know, decided he was going to go expand his horizons. Mars is not going to meet Barney Ross. As shooters go, Mars is as gifted as they get. Whatever you say. What do you say? Mars fits into this story as a weaponry specialist. He's a big key in the sense of knowing every weapon. He's very high-tech savvy in, in that aspect. Having the, the essence of each character, from the older guys to the younger ones, and seeing parts of the younger ones and the older ones, and having that father-son relationship like Sly and, and my character have um, with all the characters, pretty much, it's touching. Like it's, it's not just an action movie. You really see heart in this film in depth. I hear you lost a few friends in the desert. They bought it. You didn't. You were the guilt. I've been there. He's been there. We all lived it. Well, you don't know me. I know the time. So check this out. Uh, we're stumbling past Cruz, and we see the sexy ass Ronda Rousey, TNA, on the front of this magazine. Oh my god. Let's, uh. uh oh, 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 uh, oh. Wow. Where's. Uh, Where'd she come from? Glenn, I want you to know that we will get you to Bulgaria safely. There are two fighters on your sides. Ronda on that side. Air Marshal. And just me. It's to the Young Expendables. Heck yeah, absolutely. Finally in Bulgaria. Finally. 6 a.m. in Bulgaria. And here Yo, what's up Victor. guys? We're about to go run and stuff. Get in shape. We just woke up the Ronda Rousey, which was kind of terrifying. I know, it's just kind of mean. Hola, chica. Give me a second. Hey, Rhonda. Oh! 6.30 a.m., and there is romance budding. Uh, Victor, so, um, I'm trying to figure out how to get in shape for the Expendables. How do you work out, bro? Just like this. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like that. So we're trying to take in some of the culture, so just to give you a look around, uh, downtown. Sophia, there's just, uh... Bunch of different things to look at. So again, we're looking around at different sites in Bulgaria. Uh, right here is kind of like the main uh, strip of bars in the park. And uh, just a normal day. So here we're back again at uh, Bullion Studios. This is actually all filled with water. Um, as you can see, there's uh, not really anybody here. Um, but uh, pretty cool. We're here in the Antonov, the plane. Before the plane. Hey. Meet Mars. Join the plane. Meet Luna. Load your shit on the plane, boys. And Sylvester still. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. I am officially one of the youngest people. Well, that's fantastic. Age is just a state of mind. <laughs> it makes me very happy. No, but they are amazing. And, uh, and some of them coming from uh, worlds that are not totally cinematic. Worlds uh, coming from boxing or fighters, but they they just uh, did this very smart move. And you know, people want to see a smart move. And you know, I mean, Ronda Rousey, who I'll single out straight away because I think she's such a phenomenon. Uh, you know, there's not been a, a, a girl as tough as that, looks as you know, as hot as that ever. So she's the first of her kind, and people are so in awe of what she does. And rightly so, she's so talented. All the guys are, are great. It, it's kind of fun to get to know these new young folks and see how excited they are to be part of this. And I felt that way, you know, five years ago when I got to do the first one. I was like, I, I can't believe I'm here. This is amazing. We're like the rebellious. We're like, we know a little too much for you guys, but they're like the, the, they're the vets. They've been there and it's like, shut up. You're gonna do as we say. <laughs> Am I too? The story is great, but it's about the people in the story. But it's about to have great personas. You've got Kellen Lutz in there and Glenn Powell. I mean, they're, they're great little actors, and we've got a great crew. So it's a really great yin and yang, having the, the older top dogs and us young guns. We can show them our ways and technology and how we can simplify matters, and they can really just pass down their wisdom and expertise. The group is getting bigger and bigger in the story. It's really interesting of how these two groups, are they gonna fight each other? Are they gonna work together? Or what's gonna happen? So it's, it makes it an interesting storytelling. It's a big character shift. 
for one generation, showing an older generation how to be a little bit more efficient. I think the message of the whole movie is really saying that we really shouldn't feel threatened by each other because we all need each other and there's things that we all can offer each other. And there's like little moments in the movie where everyone that disrespected the other at some point is forced to respect the other person for whatever they bring to the table. It's quite different than the other two, just because of the size of the cast. It's a huge cast of characters that are either well-known actors or well-known performers in their own field. So each Expendables, we try and outdo the other. And I think with this one, we far outdo the second one. Expendables became an event, a cinematic event in which you can actually see legendary actors that had individual careers just doing something together. <laughs> I'm the guy that just saved your ass. To get all of those characters together is a miracle. When you come to the set and you all work together, I mean, there's a certain energy in the room. You know, a little bit of competition, because everyone wants to shine. And it doesn't just have to do with money. People respect the producer, Avi Lerner. I think they respect his vision to make movies for the world. The producer of the movie is some, uh, somebody that knows what is important for the movie, is to sell the movie. It was a challenge for me, and I use everything I can in order to get the best cast, including a friend that I have in, in the business, including uh, paying a lot of money to some of those uh, actors, including asking uh, Sylvester Stallone to give some time call and make sure that the major movie star is happy. But after all this work, after knowing the, the business, after doing 360 pictures, I got together with everyone else, but I got together the best cast that ever been exist in any movie before. I'm, I'm happy. I haven't had so much fun in years. It was exciting with the first Expendables movie that Sly brought Dolph on board, and Sly and Dolph, you know, were such iconic figures in, in Rocky, and the idea of, of Rocky facing off against Drago, and Wesley Snipes has specific cinema history with, with Sly and Demolition Man, uh, just as Antonio Banderas has specific cinema history with Sly and Assassins. And so there's this extra resonance. And so sometimes Expendables movie is a reunion, and other times Expendables is, you know, making cinema history where two movie stars, or more than two movie stars, are working together for the very first time in the history of cinema. It's amazing how easygoing and approachable all these guys are. Like Harrison Ford, I was still, till the day he left, I was like, oh my God, Mr. Ford. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's as iconic as they come. I would probably, if I were to describe Harrison Ford, I would describe cool. I have a crack in my ceiling in my bedroom in Texas where I had a whip and was trying to be Indiana Jones and cracked my ceiling. And there's a chunk missing from my ceiling. We're sitting there, I'm wandering past his trailer and Harrison just kind of wanders around set with his like hands behind his back kind of to himself. and. I just walked up to him and like after all these years of doing this, you just still get excited. He goes, I don't get excited, I get even. I was like, I don't know what that means, but it was cool as hell. You know, I wasn't in the first one as much. I was kind of on my own little side there with the bad guys, with the good guys a little bit. So in the second one, I got to know everybody, Randy and Terry and Jason and now I felt on the third one, it was, I was a little more kind of part of the gang. So it, it felt good for me. It's like, I'm like a fan, you know. I'm like a fan with a whole bunch of people in this movie. <laughs> you know, from, I looked, I was sitting on the helicopter, this helicopter scene. And I look to my right and here's Arnold Schwarzenegger. I look over my shoulder, Antonio Banderas. I'm looking down over here, I see Sylvester Stallone and Jason and I mean, my man from Twilight is here. I'm, I'm, I'm like, wow. You know, I could, I could spend at least two weeks and never leave the house and watch all of their movies. Harrison Ford is on my left shoulder over here. These are all, many of them, my, my, my childhood and, and early adult heroes.
excited to be a part of a good action movie. It's my forte, it's my genre. I guess what I bring to The Expendables is just youth and just fun time. You'll do. I feel like I'm a little boy just starting out in the industry. It's fun to do it in this kind of environment that actually is doing a tribute to a number of legends of action characters. Hold on! It's nice to be here. This is the happiest moment of my life! They had the youth and the energy and they had experience and wisdom. I could do that. You want to slip on a dress and give it a shot? <laughs> This is kind of just a few weeks out of your life where you just get together and goof off. So, why wouldn't you smile? Damn, that's cool! Three, two, one, go! In fact, commitment, get in there! A couple of them are very accomplished already. In their other sports, they're champions, so they bring a certain kind of fire in their gut. And that's what I was looking for. I was looking for people that are just salt of the earth, real individuals that someone can identify with. And it's always right here, and they got it here. They're truly into it. I remember Glenn, he wouldn't stop. I mean, he wanted to be in this movie, and he really campaigned for it. I could do that. <laughs> I was filming a movie down in Florida, and my buddy from Millennium hit me up and was like, yo, like, you're really good for this. So I put this thing really quickly on tape, and then I found out that I was down to the last three. So I wrote Sly this like, big, long email that was just like, why I was raised to be an expendable. My mom was Secret Service. I've been shooting guns since I was like able to walk. My uncles were MMA guys. So I said, you're going to meet a lot of actors that are not the real deal. If you cast them, you'll regret it. If you cast me, I'll go into the trenches and I'll fight with you. And he called me a couple days later and was like, I'll see you in Bulgaria. Yo, Marlito. Two years ago, I went through a huge boxing match. Uh, I sold out the Staples Center doing what I do, boxing. I get my jaw shattered in the fourth round. Next thing you know, three, four days go by. I'm still in the hospital. My jaw, wires shut, two metal plates and 12 screws. Talks went amongst each other. Next thing you know, my agency say, Victor, would you be up for doing a movie like Expendables 3? Long story short, I go upstairs and, uh, Mr. Stallone, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Hey, please just uh, call me Sly. You ever acted before? Absolutely not. Why do you think you deserve to be in my movie? I'm a workhorse and I will do anything to meet your needs and I'll rise to the occasion, sir. I'm gonna have you audition right now. You got a problem with that? No, no, sir. So after that, he says, all right, thanks for coming. Puts his hand out and says, congratulations, you got the part. Now get it out of my face before I change my mind. Man, I love The Expendables. I've been a huge fan since the script came out in 09, I believe. They had a character named Mr. Richards, which was a young gun compared to the veterans of the team. Sly so called my team, left a message saying, I love this kid, I want him in the movie, but New Moon and the first Expendables, a couple dates just laid on top of each other. And the second one came around and I couldn't do it. And Liam got the role and a part of me is like, damn. You got a better plan. Much better. And then the third one came around and I'm finally, no more conflicts. So I was really excited. It was kind of like Disneyland for me. Where's the candidate? What? Right there in the red dress about to chop those guys. Being a fighter and growing up with the Rocky movies, it's always been kind of one of those people you always dreamed to meet. And so when I met with him, he brought up Expendables and the whole idea of all of it. And he offered me the job on spot. I never even read lines in front of him or anything like that. So he was taking a big risk on me. And then the next day I was in Bulgaria, it was time to go. When we got there, I'm like, wow, this is really happening. We are really here. What a crazy day. So we are the Young Guns. I play John Smalley. What do you guys want from me? You running from something? Originally, we were kind of talking about where he comes from, and we liked the idea of him being Barney Ross's essence. That's why he sees himself in John. You have a hard time taking orders, don't you? If I don't know what they are, yeah. He was a part of the Navy SEALs. Mission went bad, and he becomes a lone wolf, just trying to escape the pain. I hear you lost a few friends in the desert. I've been there. He's been there. We all lived it. Well, you don't know me. 
So his whole arc is getting to trust again and getting to make friends that could die. This is a reality of being in The Expendables. And ladies and gentlemen, we officially have eyes in the sky. Copy that. Then Glenn Powell plays Thorn. He's kind of the smart of the team. What are you drinking down there, Barney? Is that like a vanilla latte or something? Very sure. But very tech savvy. We use him for all the tech support. First, I hack the security grid main server. Boom. Bypass the motion detector lasers and biometric sensors. Pow. Override the surveillance video and CCTV systems. Ba bam, and we are in. What Sly and I kind of talked about was that he was in prison because he shut down the power grid in Seattle. Shut down a whole city for three days. Why the hell would he do that? Because he can. So when you assemble this new group of expendables, I'm just like, look, I'm smarter than you guys. If you listen to me, you're not going to get shot at. It, excuse me, but what are you doing? Just running some code. Should be able to jam the signal. Why didn't you think of that? Well, I used it to check the weather. Yeah, I think part of the story and the interesting thing here is kind of how the old school way of doing things and the new kind of young techie smartphone mentality of this younger generation that in a lot of ways goes right over a bunch of our heads. Our plan is to kick down the door and start spraying bullets. It's a great plan. It's 1985. It was that supposed to be. Your name is Luna, right? Luna means uh, moon. Ron, the first time I saw her, I said, this one's a natural. Because, you know, if we're going to add a woman to the group, we want someone that can beat all the other Expendables up. Rhonda is Luna, who's a total babe, works in a nightclub, but is super intense and doesn't take from anybody. Which is Rhonda in real life. I can take care of myself. Wouldn't want to get in a fight with her, though. Wouldn't want to get her upset. Luna's speciality is close quarters combat, and she kind of represents one part of the whole young guns and the new generation of mercenaries. It's not just that you're covered in the new optical illusion camo and stuff like that, but it's also like a woman involved, which is really progressive. She's beautiful, you know, she's dynamic. She's got a really good wit, and she's really bright. I don't think anyone could seriously think that they could come out alive if they sort of had a grappling match with Rhonda. Men. My character is Dr. Death, and he's actually the team medic. But he's also a knife specialist, so he has an attraction towards close hand-to-hand -to -hand combat and slicing and dicing. Ah! Ding -a -ling, ding -a -ling. But he's also a renegade, and when they break him out, but he's just a little strange, a little different from the way he was before. So why'd you get locked away? Tax evasion. Jesus, God, you okay? Don't even fight, I love this! I'm full of energy, you know? We're brothers now! Coming back to action now that I am 53 years old, it's kind of fun. In a way, it's almost like a tribute to some of those characters that I did in the class, like Desperado, Zorro, characters like that, you know? And I like the character that they created. It's kind of an outcast personality outside of the group, but wanting to be in the group, in the expendables. I want to be your friend. I don't need a friend. So it's a guy that actually uses words a lot, which is not my forte, <laughs> which makes the character kind of comedy. I can do what you need, whatever you need. I am healthier than I look, stronger than I look, faster than I look. Actually, shit, you were born in 1984. Of course not, but I feel like I was born in 84. Oh, I was just talking to Sly on the phone. So he wanted me to do a bit, and I said, okay, but you gotta make me a bad guy or something. He said, okay, we'll work with that. How hard can it be to kill 10 men? It's fun to be the bad guy. How you feeling? And it had a little wit and um, a sense of history, so it was fun. I buy the bullet in the end, come on. Sly turns me into a Swiss cheese. I'm full of holes, you know, so, you know, that's the way it ends up. Cut in! That's a wrap for Mel and Sly. Sly and Mel wrap right now? You would think we'd all be starstruck, which we, uh, we were, we were. It was more excitement, though. One of the first scenes of all the cast together in a helicopter. So we were kind of forced, and luckily enough, to meet everyone 
in that circumstance and, and get together. <laughs> I almost got fired the first day. We like take this group picture. It's like the picture where all the expendables are together for the first time. All right, there we go, there we go. So Victor was the only guy that was not in the picture. And I go, Victor, get through the picture, get through the picture, Victor. And I just do my bad Arnold Schwarzenegger impression in real life. And Arnold was right in front of me and he just looked at me and he just goes, like looked at me like, and I was just like, I didn't think this moment would ever come where I'd do that impression and you'd be in front of me. And Sly just looks at me and he's just like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> it was just a really great way to build that team spirit and that family environment. I love that Patrick was so hands-on and so excited about it, just as excited as I was to do a good job. And it was very easy to really rally behind him and want to do a good job for him. Well done. And every time I was there filming and Patrick was there, I was like, I want to make sure he has a good day and make sure he's happy with what I'm doing. One more week. One more week. Look at my eyes. I think I'm going to sleep for about a year. We're going to be doing a couple of running shots, and as we sweep up there, then we're they're climbing into the chopper, and then obviously that's Harrison Ford. You all made Barney. Then we've got a sequence where we'll be shooting Barney, who is delayed because he's been fighting Mel Gibson downstairs. I was just enamored that I get to work with Zorro and Blade and, and Indiana Jones or Han Solo just flying our plane. All right, guys, here we go. And action! We're doing a scene today between the young Expendables and the old Expendables. The hell are they? They're with me. We meet for the first time and we bump heads right off the bat. Is your toy? Boy. You want to dance, big guy? I bump heads with Gunner, which is like I just had this like really cool Rocky Four moment. Did you see that? Did you see yeah, Dolph like get right in my face and I'm like this? I suppose they're a little bit starstruck, some of them. They haven't been in big action movies, and most of us have not made maybe 30, 40, 50 of them. And they're a little intimidated, which I can understand, you know, <laughs> Ivan Drago and all that. <laughs> so Schwarzenegger's shooting an AR-15, which is just like Harrison Ford's driving the helicopter. I'm hanging off the side of a building. I'm about to get shredded by an enemy helicopter. They come in, Terminator, and friggin' Indiana Jones take them out. <laughs> Look to my left and see one of my heroes, and then look to my right and see another one of my heroes. It's crazy. Oh, this shit is done. Regular trained actors may not be physically equipped to do what these people do. All of the superheroes, all of our action stars, in one spot. And the roof is collapsing beneath his feet. Get to the chopper! Yes, and then Arnold out, get to the chopper! You got a legend in there. In that chopper over there. Legend, legend in the chopper. Arnold's here, Jet Lee's here, and Antonio Banderas is here. It's great. You got Harrison Ford coming in. You got Kelsey Graham coming from China for two days. Antonio Banderas flying it from France, I mean, from Spain, back to France, back to Spain. I like traveling. We don't need any more. We've got enough stars for 17 movies. It's uh, kind of exciting. They just keep adding more and more guys that I grew up watching, and I'm here getting to work with them. It's pretty remarkable. I remember when I was growing up as a little kid, and I would see the action movies that Sly were in or Arnold. I wanted to be them. You're seriously smoking next to aviation fuel? I don't want to disclose the secret to the trick, but you know, the muscles on Sly, those are green screen. Yeah, kind of fun. I like getting drilled five times by Sly. You are the hero. Sly's one of the reasons I became an actor. Mel Gibson is definitely one of the reasons I became an actor. Braveheart is one of my favorite movies of all time. He's just brilliant. And I think a lot of the writing is written towards his lethal weapon character, and he just nails it. Hey, kids, what'd you learn tonight, huh? Never worked with Sly before, or Arnold, or or Harrison, or Antonio, or, you know. So it's um, it's kind of fun to sort of interact with them. I, I'm most impressed by Banderas. All I know what to do is killing people, and I do that very well. 
Very, very impressive. Pretty broad one. From our side, very impressive. <laughs> he always makes everyone feel like he's your friend. Tied up in front of Antonio Banderas, you always feel sexy. <laughs> You know, these actors, all legends from Indiana Jones, when I saw Harrison Ford there, to Rocky, people that I grew actually seeing. Where's your team, Major Drama? No team, this one's off the books. I'm not even here. I don't know why, out of everyone in the whole cast, I lose it around Harrison Ford, and I, he probably thinks that I got dropped on my head as a child <laughs> or something like that. He's just been such a cool guy to hang out with. He's so funny and so welcoming. Thank you very much, sir. I'll take a dozen copies. <laughs> Relax. I told you you'd give yourself a stroke. That is a wrap for Mr. Harrison Ford. Yeah, a team. Look at that. The Dairy hold Queens. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Seeing all these uh, legendary legends of cinema, nah, never got old. I love that. And then I'm just sitting in a helicopter, and Dolph Lundgren turns to me and he goes, You want an apple? Like, <laughs> this is a bowl of sliced apples. I'm like, Sure, Drago, thank you for the apple, you know? And just uh, pretty much casually talking to Wesley Snipes, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm in the Chopper Wood Blade. Back together again? Been a minute. Hey, you got a minute? <laughs> What's up with the three she sells? Who oh, cares? Yeah. <laughs> Wesley had never met, you know, some of these people, so it was really cool seeing a legend be enamored by another legend who they hadn't met, and you would think in the careers that all these guys have had that they've all worked together. He's power. He's power. He was covering me. He's a, he's a brother. It's my band, my band, the band of brothers, right here, the duet of brothers. Duet. Andale, pues. Mm.